Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. There by Milford, Utah, there's been a swarm of earthquakes created by your government, the Department of Energy, doing what's called Enhanced Geothermal System, EGS. This is the Forge site, about eight miles from the town of Milford. Any earthquake has the potential of being a foreshock, a 10% chance of being a foreshock from something much larger. You don't know if there's a larger earthquake is coming until the uh, sequence of earthquakes is over. This comes from geology.utah.gov map showing the location. Here's Milford and I marked out many of the earthquakes, not all of them, using Google Earth. Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. Please like, share, and subscribe. Knowledge is power. We're opening up one mind at a time. Again, this is the map showing where the forge site is. And if you look up over here, this is where they're pumping the water into the ground. Um, they have come to the conclusion that this area has a lot of heated rock, but no water. So what they're doing is pumping the water into the ground. I did find, let me see, up over here. Yeah, I believe this is one of the sites right here where they're pumping the ground, the water into the ground. They often use um, drilling sideways and they learned that technique from the oil and gas industry. The U.S. Department of Energy, DOE, has begun a large geothermal project known as FORGE, Frontier Observatory for Research in Geothermal Energy, to establish a field laboratory aimed at advancing and developing new technology, new technology for geothermal power generation. They don't care how much damage they cause to the environment or to people's homes here we have an image of the school there. This is the grade school. Um, it looks like to be uh, brick and mortar. The worst kind of structure to be in with a large earthquake. The local church, Church of Latter-day Saints, looks like it's also made of brick. I wonder if it's going to clear up for me. Hold on. Brick and mortar. Doing a Google search, uh, evidently they have a population of 1,450 some people. This must be downtown. It's a small town, small population. Everything is brick and mortar. Um, yeah, we already got some cracks in the buildings. Uh, foundation don't look too good here. It says 10, probably established in 1873. Let's go down the street a little bit. Let's take a look across the street. Oh, we got a crack in the wall over here, it looks like. Ah, let's see. Can't read the sign. It's pretty faded. Originally in this area, Smithfield, yeah, they raised uh, pigs close to this town. Um, yeah, that was the major industry. So because there's no water to produce heated steam to make the turbines move, they're pumping the water into the ground. I marked out two of the largest earthquakes. We got a 1.4 and then today there was a, a 1.5.
Enhanced geothermal systems, EGS, or human-made geothermal energy holds the potential to power more than 65 million American homes and businesses and is the next frontier, they say, for renewable energy deployment. The Geothermal Technologies Office, GTO, ESG program supports research and development and demonstration projects that guide enhanced geothermal technologies towards commercial viability. Um, so what they're doing here, it's a naturally occurring geothermal system known as hydrothermal systems required. Now they require three key elements to generate electricity. They need heat, they need fluid, and an area that they can frack, break up the ground and pump the water into. So they don't have the fluid there. So they're pumping it into the underground rock, which is now creating all these earthquakes. They're coming in about every few minutes we're now up to 75 and they recently had a 0 0.9 you can see they're real shallow um, a 1.9 mile in depth um, 2.1 miles in depth um, this, they're happening probably about every half hour these earthquakes it looks like yeah, you probably set your clock to them well we got two here this one is 1624 universal time 1631 1623 1622 yeah they had four of them within one hour every 15 minutes i'll give you a link to these documents and what really ticked me off was the department of energy also previously funded two successful egs demonstration projects well we got desert park nevada probably don't know about that but the geysers i know about the geysers I lived up there. Look how successful they were when the geyser field up here dried up. So they started pumping the water into the ground. This week alone, they've had 213 earthquakes. They've had earthquakes over a magnitude 4 in the past. Um, damage to buildings. All these recent earthquakes are probably within acceptable ranges. Looking through here, seeing what the largest is. We got a 1.3. Oh, we got a 2.0. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Let me close that. That was 0 0.7 miles in depth. Um, we'll go down here. Let's see. 2.0. Oh, there's another Cobb Mountain. Another 2.0. Okay. Um... Bear with me. 2.2, that's Cobb Mountain. Another 2.2. So what is that? Um, three or four magnitude twos. All within acceptable ranges, right? When have you ever heard about the government and, and the wastewater injection um, ever paying for damages done to homes? Have you ever heard of them doing it? No, because they haven't. So here we are back in Milford, Utah. I reset the map for the last 30 days, but it looks like they all started back on the 27th of last month, only five to six days ago. All within acceptable levels until, yeah, you get a big one, which they have happened there at Cobb, at the Geysers originally there and now here funded by the department of energy here's another image of one of the geothermal plants where they're producing the energy you can see the fans on top different pipes that they got bringing in the water let's follow this let's see where this goes both directions here we got a junction yeah this looks like maybe one of the pumps that is putting the water into the ground. I think I can get any closer before it gets too blurry for me. Okay, let's bring this out some more. Oh, we got another site right here where the pipes are going. You know, before this was um, started, 
they had to do all kinds of environmental testing and regulations and paperwork to put in. Here we got another site. But how large of earthquakes do they expect to have? Uh, when do they stop putting in the water? How large does the earthquake have to be? Before, um, yeah, they shut down. But even after they shut down, the damage has already been done. Already been done. The earthquakes would continue. Brick and mortar buildings are the worst kind of buildings to be in for an earthquake. Here on Quora, we have how large of an earthquake uh, would have to be before brick and mortar started to have damage. Most brick houses are safe in mild earthquakes. For anything bigger than a magnitude 3.0 quake, however, unreinforced brick structures are prone to cracking at the seams and sometimes collapsing. There are numerous instances all over the country of unreinforced brick walls falling in quakes um, of 6.0 or larger, and in some cases, burying people, cars, and other small structures. Many houses built before 1970 have unreinforced brick fireplaces and, chin and chimneys, and those are prone to collapse into the house in a big quake. I'll give you a link to this page. It says the problem. Houses built of unreinforced masonry, bricks, hollow clay tiles, stone, concrete blocks, or adobe are very likely to be damaged during earthquakes. The mortar holding the masonry together is generally not strong enough to resist earthquake forces. Anchorage of walls and floors and the roof is critical. These houses are weak, brittle, and can break apart. Walls may fall away or buckle, resulting in damage. How about death and injury? How to identify, I guess, how to identify if it is um, reinforced. Can bricks or stones be seen from the outside unless the walls are covered with stucco? Question. Do the brick walls have header courses of bricks turned endways every five or six rows? See drawing at the right. Uh, was a house built before 1940. If you cannot tell from the outside, turn turn off the power and take the cover plate off one of the electrical outlet boxes on the outside wall and look for brick or other masonry. If the wall is concrete or brick, it is very difficult to find out if reinforcing steel was added during construction. Um, look at the house plans, which may be on file with the building department, or consult with a licensed engineer to make the de uh, determination. And it goes on to say that there's a reminder, it is very expensive to shore up a house, remove damaged walls, and put in new walls. Consult a licensed architect or engineer to fix the problem. Uh, one solution may involve tying the walls to the floor and roof, installing a steel frame and bolting the wall to it. So do you live in this area? Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm sorry for you guys. I pray for you guys. But any earthquake has a 10% chance of being a foreshock from some, for something much larger. And you don't know if there is going to be a larger earthquake until all the earthquakes stop. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.